Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back at the Luxor in Las Vegas. The last time we were here was Home to Believe, and it's evolved into a brand new show by Chris Angel called Mind Freak, which is going to be one of the biggest shows in the world, let alone in Las Vegas. And I'm delighted to say Chris joins us again now. How are you? Great to see you again, Alex. Yeah, Mind Freak live here at the Luxor. It's a brand new show. And uh, we're really, really excited about what we're going to be doing on stage. Watching you work is fascinating. I was lucky to come and see you last week. And it is amazing how many hours there are in a day and you managed to fill them. Do you ever sleep? Uh, Everybody asks me that. Uh, I I sleep uh, very, very little and I've become accustomed to that type of lifestyle because I have so much to do and so little time to accomplish it. I mean, with Mind Freak Live, typically a show uh, would have two or three years, uh, you know, to, 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 to create it and to rehearse it and to tech it and to open. Here I had uh, three months. It's fascinating watching you work because you notice everything, don't you? A foot wrong here, a light wrong there, a sound cue wrong there. You're over everything. You could literally start a conference with your mind. Is that exhausting, being that over everything? It is um, uh, overwhelming at times because, uh, you know, I, I have to write everything down and and make sure that I that I have it noted so that we can fix it because we are um, opening in a relatively very fast amount of time so I want to make those corrections so yes I see every little thing as the creator as the director um, and in so many other areas uh, I'm very intimately involved and this you know production has my DNA all over it it's interesting how you've gone from Believe to Mind Freak and why you chose to do that because I thought Believe was a stunning production of magic and illusion and you've decided to stop that and start this. Why was that? What was the point of doing that at this point in your 10-year contract? Well, first of all, Believe uh, was a great show. It uh, it was a tremendous experience for me and and uh, it, it you know brought in $150 million dollars uh, According to Newsweek, uh, it, according to Bloomberg Businessweek, you know I'm, you know, doing pretty well with it, and I uh, essentially felt and Cirque knew I felt like even though it was a great show, it was a dinosaur uh, compared to what I was capable of, and I never really had the opportunity to flourish in the way to show people what I'm, what my talent is, and how I can create and how I can execute and and produce um, and direct. Um, you know, things that I can bring to fruition from my imagination. And Cirque got a hint of that when they saw Mind Freak Live and, and then the Supernaturals on tour and realize um, that, you know, the day and age that we live, tickets are hard to sell in Las Vegas. And uh, especially being, you know, at the Luxor, which is a fa- fantastic hotel, but it's at the end of the strip. Um, a lot of shows are not working. Chris Angel in Vegas has been working very successfully. So I would assume considering there's a five-year option in my contract. And, you know, they probably wanted me to do what would make me happy and, and bring some something fresh to Las Vegas and hopefully look into the future, uh, continuing our relationship potentially. So for me, they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And, uh, you know, I'm thrilled, beyond thrilled, even more now than I was when they offered me the deal because I um, am very excited to show people uh, what I'm capable of. Will you ever be done? Because even when this opens, there'll be other stuff you want to do within it. Will this show constantly evolve now under the banner of Mind Freak? Because I guess that's where you're at. Is that the point of this show that you can continually keep changing it and adding in and taking stuff out, which keeps you creative? Yeah, I mean, with Mind Freak Live here, uh, it gives me a license, a creative license that I've never had before with Cirque du Soleil. And I'm I'm very uh, honored that Cirque being such a successful entertainment um, monopoly, if you will, uh, you know, trust me and uh, respects my creative um, direction um, to allow me that freedom because they've never, this is unprecedented. So I'm honored that, you know, over the years we built that relationship and uh, they see that uh, I do what I say and say what I do and I don't deviate from that. I've never missed a show outside of when my son got sick. And I work tirelessly with my team to bring the finest, um, most incredible um, illusions uh, and live entertainment experience to the stage. And uh, that's what Cirque's about. So they're allowing me to to do that and supporting my vision. And uh, it's been an amazing opportunity 
because I can, like you said, always bring in new things to the show and evolve and transform and change it because it's a living organism. And again, I think there was always a duplex between who was the biggest star, Cirque du Soleil, Chris Angel, or Believe. And that's always sort of been a battle. I guess with this, it puts all the responsibility on you. How do you handle that pressure that now it really is Chris Angel, Mind Freak? Yeah, I'm, I don't want to sound uh, in any way because confidence sometimes could be mistaken for being conceited. And I'm not conceited. I work very, very tirelessly to have the confidence. I am uh, more confident in what people are about to see when we open up Mind Freak Live here at the Luxor than anything I've ever done in my life. This show will really change the face of live magic shows. And I think it will really expose all the other magic shows in town and how dated they are with their approach and execution. It's interesting seeing it last week. I mean, you're on a Broadway or bigger scale and you're trying to put it in in three or four weeks. How complicated is it? Because there's pyro, there's lighting, there are dangerous stunts that can go wrong. Where do you start with all that? It really uh, starts off in my imagination and what I want to bring to the stage, whether it's uh, lasers or pyrotechnics or over a thousand lights or revolutionary illusions or these incredible cast of artists that can do really unbelievable physical things with their body. It's all about you know strategizing and putting together a creative vision and then figuring out how to bring that vision to life and bringing the heads of each department together understanding what my vision, what the emotional intent is supposed to be for the audience and working towards bringing it to life, you know, and that takes a a lot of people, a lot of talented people, a lot of time and uh, just a relentless uh, vision and focus um, to not settle for anything but what you want to bring to life. As we sit here now, is it thrilling for you that you've got the best in the business working around you? Because this isn't a one-man effort. You can have the greatest vision in the world, but if you haven't got people that can get those illusions on stage and the people to light it properly and make it work, that, I guess, is the greatest thrill, that you have the pick of the crop. I pinch myself because, you know, I have uh, people like Jack Jacobs, who's been with me since 2000 and one uh, lighting designer. I have John Farrell, who's been with me for over 20 years. Uh, Nick Lang, who's just incredible young guy with uh, a great insight and an understanding of my vision. Um, just the whole entire uh, Cirque du Soleil crew, Tom Lapp and David Dovell and, uh, you know, uh, Tomo and just countless people that are the unsung heroes that are really the team of 200, let's just say, that are allowing me to bring this to fruition. And that's why I confidently will say that, you know, this is my time. You know, this is what I've worked my whole career for this moment, this show. And uh, I don't believe uh, I will probably be able to top this. Um, because of the theater, because of Cirque du Soleil, because of where I'm at. It's just, it's just uh, my time. And, and I think that this show uh, will be a very hard to uh, show to top um, for many, many years to come by anybody else because you would have to have this uh, lifetime of experience. Um, you'd have to have the trials and tribulations, the resources, the 60,000 square foot space to, as a laboratory to create stuff. You just couldn't put this together. It's just my time and I'm blessed to have it and I'm excited more so uh, for the audience and for the fans, the loyals all over the world because they're gonna get to see something um, that doesn't come around uh, very often in life. And I know you are literally reinventing the wheel in the show. You're putting in new stuff that's never been seen before. This is the clip they're going to use. What do we get in Mind Freak that's never been seen before? Well, you get a lot, a lot of things. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's the levitation that I've been working on for 18 years. There, there's just so many things. Uh, my new uh, segment called Phantasm, my new bird manipulation act, um, uh, just... Uh, 3D immersion experiences um, that that tie and integrate illusion that 
interacts with the virtual world and the virtual world interacts with the illusion in a seamless uh, experience that's 3D. Um, so there are so many elements, it's hard to pick one. They're all my children. I can tell you that there's more magic in this show than any production I've ever seen, including my own productions. There's over, over, well over 50 different illusions in this show. As a matter of fact, I am right now about 25 minutes over and what I'm gonna do so I don't have to take out a ton of things because there are, they're very strong and it really is a roller coaster ride. Uh, I'm gonna take the animation that uh, Maestro performs and I'm gonna move that uh, 10 minutes before seven o'clock, if that's our show time, to allow him to do his piece. And then there's a 15 minute video called Evolution that's gonna happen prior to that. So really, uh, the audience is gonna get a tremendous value um, and, and they're gonna be able to come to see the show at say 6.30 for pre-show and seven o'clock for the main show. And I'll be on stage a hell of a lot longer and I'll be doing things that are much more physically, mentally, emotionally demanding um, than anything that I've ever done live. I mean, this show has me doing things that uh, I had to get in the best shape of my life. I've been training like a maniac very specifically for being able to accomplish certain things. And uh, so this is a very challenging show and uh, physically, mentally, and, and, uh, and emotionally because it's twice a night and, uh, and you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta be on your game or else you can get seriously hurt or even killed. I've known you a few years now, and I don't think I've ever defended anybody more in my career than you. Are you amazed still by the jealousy and the bitterness that surrounds you, that they cannot fathom how you do what you do? It's no surprise. I mean, I have a target on my head, and I'm happy to have that target on my head because I'm the guy out there. I'm the guy who has dominated the world of magic uh, beyond the last decade. Uh, this is gonna be one of my biggest years yet with Mind Freak Live uh, at the Luxor with my touring shows uh, that, that would be performing uh, throughout the world. My uh, a television special back home at A&E this October, which is gonna be, it's just gonna ramp up. What I did with Mind Freak back in that era it's a whole new era and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm, uh, I'm the guy out there and, you know, I work harder than anybody out there. And, uh, you know, there are people that have called actual writers to try to retract quotes, uh, people that have called, uh, um, you know, business magazines because, you know, of envy and jealousy and insecurity. And what I say is, you know, life is too short. I look ahead, I don't look over my shoulder. And I try to be the best I can be as an artist and as a human being. And I think the world of magic is a big place. There's many different audiences and there's a lot of different opportunities in Las Vegas for, for different shows. So I would say focus on your own show, on being the best you can be, and don't waste your life worrying about what I'm doing. Don't consume your life with what I'm doing because there are people in the Vegas area, people that everybody knows of, person across the street that his whole life is consumed by Chris Angel. Literally, his whole life is consumed by Chris Angel and what I do and what people say and you know, and, and it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. You know, everybody had a moment and their moment passes and there's somebody new. This is my moment and this will be my moment for as long as I choose it to be my moment. And when I decide that I'm not gonna do this, there'll be somebody else and I have to accept that. And so do they. I was at a show just last week, Penn and Teller, and they open with a cardboard cutout of you. And I will say to their faces, it seems to me a home goal to be promoting you in their show and just makes me more curious about you. They don't quite get it, do they? That they're, they're not helping themselves. I would ignore you if you were opposite me and I was doing the same thing, because if you can't beat it, ignore it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's my sentiment as well, but I'm honored that they wanna, <laughs> they wanna promote my show like that, please do, because, you know, um, I, I guess, I mean, they do five shows a week or whatever, and I guess they have to do whatever they have to do to survive. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy out there that, uh, that people look towards, the industry look towards um, for what the next thing is. 
And, you know, they're doing what they've been doing for the last however many years. And they do it well and they do it great. And I give them props. But I asked Penn and Teller to do the charity that I have coming up and I still haven't heard back. So when people don't get back to you that like that and their wife tells you that they would be participating in it, for me, um, I, I just, it just shows me their character. The thing is, is that life is too short. And when you have a, a child that has cancer, and going through treatment, you realize how delicate life is. And all of this superficial bullshit is just that. It really means nothing in the big world, in the big picture. And that's why I reached out the Olive Ranch to different magicians and tried to collectively come together for a greater cause than ourselves. Unfortunately, some of them are not in that mindset. God bless them. And uh, I'll just continue on being positive, doing what I love to do. And uh, at the end of the day, my best success is my happiness. One thing that does worry me about you is your well-being and your health, because as well as doing 10 shows a week here and creating Mind Freak, you're taking the show on the road. You've got a TV special coming up. Then you're doing a charity special for your son. When is enough enough? Because the body can only take so much. And actually for anybody to do 10 shows a week would be more than enough. Well, for me, I just, uh, I don't know. I keep on saying that I'm going to take a little bit of a break and then I have a vacation coming up and then I book myself to go to Chile and do a show in a 15,000 seat arena um, or go back to Foxwoods in my next break um, or do a TV special in my June break. So I'm always uh, doing stuff and I'm always developing things. I guess it's just me. I, I say I want to take a break, but I guess if I really wanted to take a break, I would. I think... I'm um, obsessed and um, married to my passion, and that's to create and to do what I love to do, and sometimes what I hate to do. It's that it's that thing that lives in me that uh, makes me very competitive uh, and challenges me to push my own uh, comfort level and and try to reach uh, different levels of creativity. Um, and, and, and try to see what I'm capable of. And I did the same thing. I mean, in Mind Freak Live here at the Luxor, you know, it's like a roller coaster ride. I mean, there's very different moments in this show um, that you might not expect. I mean, there's one moment where it's, you know, Chris Angel from an era with the makeup. And then there's another moment that, you know, I'm talking about my son and about cancer and about, you know, what that is like and and how as a society we need to address that um so there's a yin and a yang and uh so for me i i love that opportunity to act and to and to perform and to be real and to be everything that i really am not only um when i'm off stage but also on stage because that's me i was here last year when you found out about johnny getting ill is there any way of explaining how that feels to be a father and the proudest moment of your life and then to get that bombshell that his life may never be the same again? Well, he's doing really well. He's uh, technically in remission. He has been for several months. Um, he's going through uh, three years of chemo and uh, he is in his uh, in the late intensification block right now of chemo, which is one of the most difficult blocks to go because the dosage is very strong and he has to have uh, at times a blood transfusion and the spinal taps and uh, you know things that no child should ever go through. But uh, we're hopeful that uh, July he'll be able to come out um, and spend some time uh, with his dad. I'm gonna take him to uh, wherever he wants to go and have a blast with him. And I'm so excited to, to be able to uh, have him back uh, at my home and, and spend some time with him and his mom. And uh, But they've been doing overall really good. They have good days and they have bad days, but we're very optimistic. And, you know, we want to take this situation, Chenille and myself, and do something for the greater cause, which is other children that don't have a voice. There's one child, one child every three minutes will be diagnosed with cancer somewhere in the world. And out of every $100 that the American Cancer Institute raises, less than 70 cents goes to pediatric cancer. It's a huge disproportionate number. And I want to be the voice for those kids if they want me to be. Uh, I'm uh, going to be talking to some uh, senators and Congress 
uh, folks and hopefully get in front of the hill to try to get some more money allocated for research and treatment. And I'm taking it upon myself and uh, to raise a million dollars in one night on September 12th. And we've had just Everybody that you can ever imagine and beyond participating, you know, people like Celine Dion, Jerry Lewis, Tony Orlando, Elton John, Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi, uh, Dee Schneider from Twisted Sister, um, uh, you know, just uh, uh, Gary Oldman, an incredible actor, Gene Simmons of Kiss, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Britney Spears. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Mike Tyson, Dana White, WWF. Um, uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Blue Man Group, uh, Gordy Brown, uh, Terry Fader. You see the good and the compassion and the sincere um, concern and I believe that I was uh, dealt this hand because I'm supposed to use my success um, far beyond for my own benefit, but for these kids. And so that's what we're trying to do. And if you want more information, you can go to chrisangelhelp.com to get that. But the name of the event is HELP, which stands for Heal Every Life Possible. And it benefits Johnny Christopher Foundation, Children's Charitable uh, Foundation, which is going to donate 100% of every cent that comes in goes to treatment and research. Not one cent will come out for any expenses. I fund it completely out of my own pocket. And uh, that is the most important thing out of everything. Um, so he's doing well. We're excited about this event. And uh, when I heard the news about Johnny uh, being diagnosed, I obviously broke down. I... Uh, decided at that moment that I was going to make a documentary so that other people and other families that are going to get this same news that I got, those, those words that you never want to hear as a parent, your son has cancer, your daughter has cancer. Um, so we we're making this movie called 1095, which is the amount of days Johnny will be in treatment, three years, and uh, that will be coming out once he is uh, completed with his treatment and he moves on uh, with his life and uh, hopefully lives a very fruitful, long, healthy life way beyond his dad. As we sit here today, aside from Johnny, which I know breaks your heart on one level, and then there's another side where you just wish him well, as everybody else does. As you sit here, are you excited? Are you nervous? Is this the greatest month of your life? Is it the most terrifying month of your life, opening this new show? Because they're all looking and they're all going to come. How do you feel? Well, I'm, I'm not scared of anything. I mean, uh, God is my only fear that I've lived my life a certain way on this earth. Um, and in his, in his uh, eyes, for better uh, saying, um, uh, feels that way. Um, so for me, uh, I, I'm not scared of anything. I'm very confident. I've done my homework. I've busted my ass. But anything can happen. You know, we can have technical problems. I mean, it's live. It's live entertainment. And whatever it is, it is. You know, it doesn't really um, matter. It's just going to be what it is. And we've done all of our due diligence to make it the best it can be. And if it's not the best the day that it opens, it will be the best by the time that it officially opens on on uh, June 30th. So um, I'm not. I'm excited. I'm tired, but I'm incredibly excited. Um, I have a lot more work to do in the next uh, uh, eight days before it opens, and uh, you know we're we're working around the clock. Literally, this theater is only um, only basically down for two hours a day, seven days a week. So there's a lot to be done, and uh, um, I'm very excited. I'm just really, really, really excited because this is my dream. My dream is finally coming to fruition. Everything that I've done beyond this, or be before this, I should say, was stuff that I wanted to do, but this is something I've dreamt about when I met Cirque du Soleil and I presented to them, but I didn't have the opportunity at that time to do it. And in hindsight, it was probably better because uh, believe gave me the understanding, the experience, along with the touring shows, to be able to accomplish something like this. I couldn't do this back then. It's very interesting. Some people don't want to hear this, but I've never met anyone more committed than yourself. I've never seen a guy put on a better show. I've never seen a guy work harder to put on a better show. You have my ultimate respect and admiration because it's not easy. And seeing you work last week and how you see everything is nothing but inspiring. I wish you all the best. Mind Freak opens at the end of June. Previews from uh, May. Thank you for your time, Chris Angel. Wish you all the best. 
Thank you so very much for the very, very kind, heartfelt words, because uh, as you said before, there will be people that have come here and it doesn't matter if I float out over their heads and turn into a million birds, they will still rip it and be negative. And that's who they are as, as a person. So nothing that you can do can change that. The thing that you have to do is be true to yourself, know that you're doing the best that you possibly can do and be true to yourself. And let me tell you something, this show represents me 1000% and I know it's gonna be a fucking amazing, mind-blowing spectacle that the world of magic has never seen. And uh, if you don't see that, cool. Go back and do what you're doing and let's see who has the bigger audience. Chris Angel, thank you for your time. Thank you.